in the name of allah the ever living and sustainer of all the existence alliance to the fifth international conference on applied zoology 2022 on the behalf of the organizing committee of ecos 2022 and from applied zoological society of pakistan the organizing committee of ecos 2022 has managed to organize an exciting scientific program with multiple sessions for you according to your field of interest to the field of applied zoological science i would like to extend my heartiest welcome to international keynote speakers from usa turkey sweden iran uk italy and malaysia this conference will include seven live oral presentation sessions from the fields of applied zoological sciences including parasitology microbiology toxicology biodiversity ecology biotechnology molecular biology natural products covid-19 epidemiology drug discovery physiology cancer biology entomology fisheries wildlife and nutrition i am sure you all will feel enriched with knowledge after completion of this international scientific event i hope you all will have very productive and great time ahead thank you for being part of ecos 2022 thank you after completion Ms. of Sabia this Zara, international for scientific the delightful event, overview of i hope you all will have very productive and great time ahead 2022 thank you for being part of ecos now, 2022 with the recitation of verses of holy quran we would officiate the inaugural ceremony the spiracle of the fire after completion of the international of scientific event over the silent affluence of water is the witness of your i hope if you all will have the rhythmical movements of moon is the witness of your perfection my words my soul are the witness of the oneness of the glory of allah whose glorification can't be described in words now i would like to request muhammad qasim raza for the recitation of verses of holy quran from the department of zoology government college university faisalabad please muhammad qasim raza thank you muhammad qasim raza for enlightening our heart with the recitation of holy verses of quran zikr e khuda kare zikr e mustafa na kare zikr e khuda kare zikr e mustafa na kare hamare muh mein ho aisi zubaan khuda na kare hazrat muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the scholar of the humanity the gem of mankind the ruby of the universe the sultan of creature the unparalleled the unrivaled the infallible the teacher of teachers who changed the whole world and made us better creatures to give tribute to our holy prophet hazrat muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam i would like to invite ms komar riyaz from mphil zoology government college university faisalabad for nadir sulay maqbool sallallahu alaihi wasallam please ms komal riyaz
Allah, thank you so much, Komariyas, for such a humble and glorious tribute to our last Prophet, Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, it's my honor to invite Professor Dr. Faraj Bin, Vice Chairperson of Applied Zoological Society of Pakistan and Dean Faculty of Life Sciences, Government College University, Faisalabad. She holds PhD degree from Qaidiyazam University, Islamabad. I request Professor Dr. Faraj Bean to join us 
and share her variable insight with us. Please, Professor Dr. Parajbeen. In the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. Good morning, everyone. I am Professor Dr. Farah Jibri, Dean Faculty of Life Sciences, Government College University of Faisalabad, and Vice Chairperson of the Applied Zoological Society of Pakistan. I am honored to welcome you all to the 5th International Conference on Applied Zoology, ECAS 2022. It was exactly five years ago that we organized the first international conference on applied zoology at Government College University of Hassabad in October 2018. At that time, the theme for the conference was to exploit the novel techniques in applied zoology and the conservation of endangered species. This year, the theme is promoting innovation and need-based applied zoological research. This interdisciplinary approach has given rise to the new fields at the intersections of disciplines that transcend traditional disciplinary boundaries. The integration of disciplines have led to great achievements and groundbreaking innovation in diverse areas. The CAS 2022 thus showcases a plethora of exciting discoveries and innovation in all fields of applied zoology. The need for applied zoology arises primarily from the far more complex and challenging problems confronting the global community today and therefore the corresponding need to open up of the space for discoveries and innovation to find new solutions by bringing different disciplines to work together. Our mission is to advance zoology and develop innovative technology to further economic growth and to improve lives. Lastly, it is vitally important that we continue communicating and exchanging ideas that people from different different from other fields and the backgrounds so that we can keep ourselves well informed of the development in other areas of research i hope everyone will go home with new ideas and inspiration for collaborations we thank the worthy vice chancellor professor dr sulman tahid of Khalifa university of engineering and information technology rahim Khan and his team for their warm welcome and hosting this conference. The hospitality and energetic efforts of local organizers to make this international conference a successful event are highly commendable. The hard work of Dr. Tahir Bilal is highly appreciated. I also acknowledge the kind support of Professor Dr. Muhammad Ali, Tampan Diaz, Tahir Diaz, and Chairperson of the Applied Zoological Society of Pakistan. I thank my team at Gobi University of Asrabad, Professor Dr. Salma Sultana, Professor Deva Sultana, Dr. Shabana Naz, Dr. Azhar Rasul, Dr. Makdum, Dr. Samina Kamar, Dr. Israr, and Dr. Shahzad, and Dr. Shahzad Ali Shahi Keta. I really appreciate the day and night hard work of Dr. Azhar Rasul for the success of this conference. Thanks all and God bless you. Thank you, Professor Dr. Farhad Jabeen, Vice Chairperson of the Applied Zoological Society of Pakistan and Dean of Faculty Life Sciences at Government College University, Faisalabad. Now, I would take it as a privilege to invite Professor Dr. Salma Sultana. She is the General Secretary of the Applied Zoological Society of Pakistan and principal organizer of International Conference on Applied Zoology 2022. I warmly welcome Professor Dr. Salma Sultana to share her insightful thoughts. Please, Professor Dr. Salma Sultana. Thanks. I feel privileged to welcome you all the distinguished guests at this pleasant morning in the inaugural session of 5th International Conference on Applied Zoology 2022. Dr. Muhammad Ali, 
तगमा इम्तियाज तारा इम्तियाज वाइस चांसलर कायद अजम यूनिवर्सिटी इस्लामाबाद पैटर्न एंड चीफ चेयरमैन ऑफ अप्लाइड जोलॉजिकल सोसाइटी ऑफ पाकिस्तान रिस्पेक्टिव प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर मोहम्मद सलमान ताहिर वाइस चांसलर ऑफ ख्वाजा फ्रीज यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग एंड इंफॉर्मेशन टेक्नोलॉजी वाइस चांसलर गवर्नमेंट कॉलेज यूनिवर्सिटी प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर शाहिद कमाल चीफ गेस्ट वर्दी प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर शाहिद महमूद बेग चेयरमैन पाकिस्तान साइंस फाउंडेशन इस्लामाबाद प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर हबीब बुखारी वाइस चांसलर ऑफ कसार यूनिवर्सिटी मरी एंड प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर मोहम्मद नईम खान वाइस चांसलर यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ बिल्तस्तान कर दो ऑनरेबल डीन प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर फरद जबीन वाइस चेयरमैन ऑफ अप्लाइड जोलॉजिकल सोसाइटी ऑफ पाकिस्तान गवर्नमेंट कॉलेज यूनिवर्सिटी फैसलाबाद रिस्पेक्टेड नेशनल एंड इंटरनेशनल की नोट स्पीकर बिलोंगिंग फ्राम टर्की मलेशिया स्वीडन अरान इटली एंड यू के एंड की नोट स्पीकर नेशनली फ्राम गवर्नमेंट कॉलेज यूनिवर्सिटी फैसलाबाद आदि अजम यूनिवर्सिटी इस्लामाबाद University of Saint Jam Shuro Sargodha University Bahauddin Zakaria University Multan University of Agriculture Faisalabad Lahore College for Women University Punjab University Lahore Chulistan University of Veterinary and Animal Sciences and more than 300 participants from all other universities valued dean directors chairmen in charge faculty members coordinators local organizers and faculty of life sciences from khwaja free university of engineering and information technology and as well as faculty from the department of zoology government college university faisalabad and my beloved students first of all i would like to appreciate all of you for your presence online and physical and formally it is an honor and pleasure to welcome you all in the inaugural session of fifth international conference on applied zoology 2022 under the platform of applied zoological society of pakistan i would like to appreciate for the cooperation guidance extended by the dynamic leadership of worthy vice chancellors for providing a platform to carry out research oriented activities no doubt without their support vision and inspiration it would not be possible for us to continue the activities of applied zoological society of pakistan i would extend my gratitude to worthy professor dr mohammad salman tahir vice chancellor khwaja free university of engineering and information technology for promoting and appreciating the generous and for hosting the 5th international conference on applied zoology 2022 at their university let me introduce the department of zoology government college university faisalabad it was established in 1989 for the teaching to graduate and post graduate students firstly it was affiliated with the punjab university lahore yeah. and it took a mature turn after the upgradation of government college faisalabad sp is providing the forum for exchange of information and experience to unprofessional and professionals applied zoology encourages for the significant research contributors in their respective fields or research and to achieve the different awards that have been initiated from its platform for from the last 4 years we are giving them in their in the recognition of their services in different fields let me end by saying that enjoy online and physical participation and stay blessed and keep doing research oriented activities once again thank you all for your participation Thank you so much Professor Dr Salma Sultana to share your insightful thoughts it's always a pleasure to have you now this session is going to end our next session would be a plenary session that would be moderated by Ms Rabia Zara now it's hand over to you Ms Rabia Zara now it's time for our right our first keynote speaker professor dr yusuf fatter professor 
head division of biochemistry university of health sciences turkey and he will talk about dissolving combinatory effects to make innovative breast cancer please professor dr yusuf hi i'm happy to be at the fifth international conference on applied zoology uh, 2022 and uh, i am thankful to dr uh, Rasul Asar for invitation uh, to this uh, lovely uh, meeting. And uh, my name is, is uh, Yusuf Tutar, and I'm working at University of Health Sciences at Faculty of Pharmacy, Division of Biochemistry. And we have also a graduate program on molecular oncology for uh, medical doctors. And um, being on uh, breast cancer and its immune subtypes uh, to reveal molecular mechanism to design um, small molecules as uh, drug candidates. Well, um, we uh, saw the mechanism of these uh, subtypes but um, designing a molecule um, is not enough to inhibit uh, the cancer cells at all if you target just a um, single uh, micromolecule. And, um, and there are uh, subsections that we have to deal for effective inhibition. The first one is the non-coding RNAs. And these non-coding RNAs basically forms a connection uh, between a cytosol and mitochondria. And um, effective non-coding RNAs that we found is pseudogenes and microRNAs. Pseudogenes basically affect heat shock proteins and isoforms of heat shock proteins at uh, cancer cells increases. So this uh, suppresses a small molecule induced um, cancer cell inhibition. So uh, we also uh, designed uh, molecules that will bypass these steps. And another key point is the energy metabolism. As you know, most of the subtypes uh, depend on Warburg effect. That means uh, relatively low, low or no oxidative phosphorylation is observed. Well, actually in uh, triple negative um, breast cancer subtypes, uh, oxidative phosphorylation is observed. So what we design is uh, inducing um, some key TCA cycle intermediates and blocking uh, glycolysis. And all these will uh, drive the cells to the uh, cell death um, through apoptosis and, and through uh, senescence. Um, uh, but uh, the last uh, mishap is the cancer stem cells and uh, we monitored the um, uh, cancer cell stem uh, profile. cell death and uh, the other one is oncogene induced senescence 
And this is actually um, um, useful for cancer cells, and this is also inhibited with our compounds. And the nice thing of our compound is the energy metabolism, and this is regulated through CHRP that actually shows a combination effect of not only the energy pathways. So um, um, the last thing that we designed so uh, that's why uh, we basically insist of working on these cancer stem cells and um, our compounds are effective in uh, inhibiting the uh, cancer stem cell breast cancer stem cells well we also tested if the pseudogenes and um, hsp90 ab4 uh, pseudogene is one of them. Uh, the compounds are effective not only um, decreasing the stem cell population but also the pseudogene. So we trace the stem cell population through um, four genes NANOX STAT3, SOX2, and FOF5F1, and the expression levels of uh, these four genes uh, for different compounds are decreased. So, um, other thing that is important uh, of our compound is the 
compounds induced immune system and uh, well um, another nice nice pathway in healing pathway uh, induce uh, immune system but also um, but also uh, suppresses um, pseudogene microRNA effects uh, as well as the um, cancer stem cells. So um, we have a combination effect of those compounds and actually uh, we are working on um, uh, animal experiments right now and uh, the compounds uh, shows uh, superior uh, properties uh, through uh, ADME and anti-cancer properties. So um, we are uh, on uh, the process of patenting and uh, the nice thing of our compounds is also they display uh, their activity at lower micromolar concentration. So uh, the compounds have the potential to be uh, a clinical drug. So um, I would like to uh, thank you for your kind attention and I again uh, appreciate uh, the invitation and I would also would like to emphasize the uh, founder of our project and uh, this is Tubitac with the grant number uh, 219Z142. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Dr. Yusuf, for your informative insights. Now I'm delighted to invite our second keynote speaker, Professor Dr. Tahira Muhammad Abdi. Faculty of Animal Sciences and Food Technology, Agricultural Sciences and Natural Resources University, Iran. And she will talk about camel milk, a unique superfood for health complications. Please, Professor Dr. Tahira. In the name of Allah, hello everyone. I'm happy to join you in this conference and uh, I'm going to talk on uh, camel milk, a unique superfood for health complications. About 82.5% of milk in the world produced by cows and camels only produce 0.3%. But, but camel milk production in the world is increasing. Why we consider camel milk as a superfood? There are many differences between camel milk and the other livestock milk that make it special, uh, like camel milk is rich in vitamin C, manganese, iron, copper, and zinc, rather than cow milk, and also it's a great alternative for kids with allergy to cow milk uh, because it doesn't have beta lactoglobulin. Camel milk has uh, a high amount of unsaturated fatty acids for heart health and its lactose is uh, more digestible for lactose intolerant cases and uh, also the vitamin c in camel milk is uh, higher than other milks uh, there are some protective protein and enzymes in camel milk like lactoferrin uh, uh, high uh, peptide glycan recognition protein and high amount of lactoperoxidase uh, these are antimicrobial and uh, uh, it has small size immunoglobulins and also it has the highest concentration of IgG uh, and uh, it's a rich source of insulin above 50 to uh, a unit insulin per liter uh, and um, also um, the presence of lactic acid bacteria in camel milk make it uh, um, proper milk for gut health and function. Uh, but one of the most important uh, therapeutic effects of camel milk is uh, anti-diabetic 
properties uh, scientifically camel milk contains insulin like protein uh, that covered by fat micelles and it's not destroyed in stomach and the presence of a high amount of lactoferrin igg and antioxidant components in camel milk um uh, these are the other reasons for anti-diabetic properties of camel milk um, it is proved that camel milk can control blood sugar by these mechanisms as you see here um, it has effect on insulin receptors activity uh, increases signaling in insulin sensitive tissues uh, also it has effect on pancreatic beta cells function and the inhibition of glucagon receptors and activation of glucose transport you see those mechanisms uh, here as i explained in previous slides uh, it is proved that um, using raw camel milk in type 1 diabetic cases uh, cause to increase the insulin secretion and uh, um, reduce the required insulin and insulin resistance and all of them cause to um, microbial effects as you see here uh, camel milk um, uh, has the, the highest concentration of lactoferrin lysozyme and igg in compared to other livestock milk uh, camel milk is effective on autistic cases um, because it decreases the oxidative stress. Um, possibly, camel milk causes to recovering the immune system in these cases uh, because of immunoglobulins. Uh, so, the brain damage uh, can be prevented by uh, camel milk. And uh, the, another reason is antioxidant um, components in camel milk. So the consumption of camel milk in these cases improve the uh, clinical symptom of these children and uh, they will be uh, quieter and less destructive. Uh, camel milk is uh, mm, effective on hepatitis mm, because uh, presence of uh, high amount of lactoferrin inhibits the virus entry into the host cells and um, uh, some components uh, bioactive components in camel milk stops cancer cells uh, by activation of apoptosized uh, uh, pathway and uh, also immunoglobulins, lactoferrin, and the other iron binding glycoprotein in camel milk um, are anti tumor uh, agent. Uh, presence of alpha, uh, alpha hydroxy acids in camel milk um, mm, has effect on uh, mm, health, uh, on skin health. Uh, and it's uh, anti-aging and uh, eliminates wrinkles uh, and improve um, dryness um, and uh, also uh, some bioactive peptides and uh, probiotic bacteria in camel milk uh, reduce the cholesterol absorption from intestine so it can improve the cardiovascular issues um, not Camel milk uh, doesn't have beta lactoglobulin, so it's a proper milk for children who are suffering from milk allergies. And uh, also, uh, camel milk components uh, can improve uh, other food, uh, food allergies. Uh, regarding those these important properties, as I explained, for camel milk, uh, so we can say uh, camel milk has precious nutritional value and it's considered to be nutritious superfood for most nutritional deficiency and uh, health complications. But uh, regarding to many studies, it needs to do more research on uh, processed camel milk or camel milk powder uh, and uh, on and in its efficacy on health complications uh, thank you for your attention if there is any question i am happy to answer thank you thank you professor dr tahira for your constructive intuitions now i would like to invite our third keynote speaker dr lena dikchin Institute for Research in Molecular Medicine, University of San Malaysia, Paulo Pinaf Malaysia. And he will talk about 
identification of anti malarial compounds isolated from malaysian soils streptomyces species h11809 and their mode of action please dr lain addiction thank you very much for the invitation as a keynote speaker for fifth international conference on applied zoology uh, icaz 2022 i'm very proud to be here to sharing uh, my research uh, with you uh, my uh, uh, this uh, I'm going to deliver a uh, lecture entitled Identification of Antimalarial Compound Isolated from Malaysia Soil, SESH 11809 and their mode of action. This work is mainly done by uh, my PhD student, uh, uh, Mr. Fauzi Mahmoud. Uh, from, uh, we are from Institute for Research in Molecular Medicine, University of Malaysia. And Fauzi also a tutor in Faculty of Science and Natural Resources, UC Science Malaysia Sabah, Kota Kinawalu, Malaysia. So uh, this research also supported by uh, Professor Lee Pinches, also from Biotech Research Institute, UC Malaysia Sabah, Kota Kinawalu, Malaysia. So we're going to start with uh, research background. Malaria, as you everyone knows, I think it's uh, considered top three infectious disease tropics, cost than 200. 250 million cases annually and it's also cost a half million dead annually so it's considered a very deadly diseases so second part is uh, this is considered a most uh, this is as everyone know is a mosquito borne disease and in, in inflicted by six type of uh, plasmodium species strain but uh, plasmodium falciparum 95% of the cases mainly in Africa is considered high, highly mortality among children less than 5 years old and pregnant women. So this is a detailed cycle of plasmodium, a life cycle and this drugable stage. As you can see from uh, different di different types of uh, stages has uh, come from the and this, and this is show the uh, old stage uh, the type of drugs that have been used. It can be come from the old stages or blood stages or liver or blood stages. Uh, so if for further detail, I think you can read more in the uh, other resources. So promo statement, I think is for uh, why we want to find the uh, drugs, new type of drugs. Uh, this emergence of drug resistance is plasmodium as one well, know. And second is low drugs diversity. And third is the antimalaria with unknown mode of action. It means some of the antimalaria drugs that really uh, cannot distinguish what the uh, molecule targets. So, from the first one, emergence of drug resistance, as this is as you know, uh, they have uh, since uh, development of uh, antimalaria drugs discoveries, the only a uh, handful of uh, drugs have been discovered and be effective against malaria. So they have, uh, but they are uh, developing uh, highly resistant current or the final anti regime, uh, temisins, and with combination therapy ACT approved in 2012. So atomic consider a last, last drugable uh, drug drugs against a uh, malaria. So malaria abroad might be happen in the future, and so it can put a. Uh, put billions of people at the risk because uh, development of drug dissension against a plasmodium. So second part is a low anti-malaria drug diversity. As you can see, there's only a hand, only three classes. All the drugs have been discovered so far. They only divide to three classes. Uh, across amino uh, alcohol, atifolates, artemisinin uh, uh, compounds. So, plasmodium develop resistance against all uh, antimalarial classes. New antimalaria will know uh, mode of action are uh, urgently needed. So, third is the rationale of this study. Why, why we want to carry this uh, this kind of research to discover uh, new uh, drugs for antimalaria. So, because uh, what we are using for our uh, source of our discovery is a microorganism. It's considered uh, unlimited sources for bioactive or compounds. Uh, B, uh, seconds, uh, uh, humans uh, humanized uh, GSK3 may be lead to identification of anti malaria agents. Uh, third is a spinogenic resistant development, an effective approach to identify anti malaria molecule targets. 
So S1 is the first, it's a micro is considered a prolific uh, sources for anti antibiotics uh, compounds. 45% of biotech compounds uh, are originated from microorganism. I did not bacteria uh, comes, uh, account for the 16% uh, 60, of the total compound. From the 200 genes antibiotic uses, streptomyces contribute 60% of the bioactive compounds. As we know, uh, the, com uh, the strain that we use, H11809, also uh, consider a streptomyces species. So, expression of other genes or consider a rare antibiotic or new class of compound. Okay, it's very uh, urgent, maybe to a way to a, new, a way to discover uh, this kind of uh, new drug identified and demaria. GSK3 beta is a conserved kinase, can be found in plasmodium, a validated anti malaria targets. Subtle uh, structural differences, especially is ATP get gatekeeper residue of GSK3 beta in different species, may affect compound specificity. So uh, ATP get of uh, as humans, GSK3 beta is called leucine, but ATP get, uh, get capable for plasmodium GSK3 beta is maintaining. Effect, effect the binding of Paulon's uh, derivatives is uh, uh, then increase uh, specificity toward a uh, plasmodium GSK3. Selective of plasmodium GSK3 inhibition is possible. So, what are the advantages at targeting GSK3 for anti development? Okay, and this is combination of uh, human GSKT and plasmodium GSKT. Human GSKT involved in a dramatic increase of immune response, open open the uh, plasmodium preservative infection, uh, considered a cytokine storm. Cytokine storm preserve uh, responsible for fatal several malaria. And essential uh, for plasmodium GSKT, essential protein for plasmodium survival, involved especially during drug blood cell stage of infections and valid target for antiviral drug development. So this dual invasion of host and uh, parasite GSK3 attacks has double-edged sword effects, uh, effects prevent fatal uh, uh, plasmodium facerum infections and also is again uh, in considered anti-published data. So this uh, data suggests that the best essay expressing uh, GSK3 beta can be attractive approach to narrow down sample for selection for anti malaria activities so, because this is a easy, uh, easy to perform and comparative to in vitro uh, plasmodium assay, and this is because use is, uh, this is a very cost effective, and plus I think the attention is no ethical issue involved uh, in the, using the research using yeast, uh, unlike using uh, animal or humans. So third is a spontaneous drug resistant development to identify a unique uh, mode of actions. So in nature, a plasmodium capable of delivering drug resistant via genetic mutation, as we know. Uh, this is how they develop a drug uh, resistant against different types of drugs. And it could be mimics in the laboratory. So lead to identification of new anti drugs of uh, drug action, of uh, mode of action anti malaria via uh, cells. Okay, objective of this study. Uh, to able, first is to avoid uh, anti malaria activity, so the crude extract of uh, with the humans uh, GSK3 3 beta in vitro activities. And to identify anti malaria compound produced by Malaysian soy uh, uh, microorganisms, especially the H10109 uh, cell uh, strain, uh, streptomyces strains. Third, to identify a mode of action of most potent anti malaria compound used in this study. So uh, 5.0, this is a method uh, methodology used in uh, whole research. So okay, you can see is, uh, the whole is, is a big project. So we have first we use the bioactive bioactivity using preliminary screening using uh, GSK3 yeast, then uh, reproducible testers in recans and optimize our mass production of strain and using expression of heat stability tests and anti-malaria assay. And all the compound is uh, using HPLC, uh, others than MMR. Also, then this all the compound isolated by using a study of mode of action for uh, study. So we're gonna use only the in, vi in vivo yeast because uh, they will be uh, using for other compounds. So for result and discussions, a six point one yeast base as, as I mentioned just now, we use yeast base assay to as a potential preliminary assay. So. 
it's said to identify for anti-malaria drugs discovery. So, as you know, uh, yeast based assay is very cost effective and it, it's a possible, uh, no other issues. So, we use uh, H1180 streptomyces. Okay, you can show this here. GSK3 uh, 3 beta assay show inhibit GSK3 beta also show anti malaria activities. As you show, this is different type of strain or sample. And this is a strand that other isolated from. As you can see, uh, this uh, there's uh, six strand that show a positive GSK3 beta in vivo. Also show uh, against uh, anti malaria activity using a passive volume 3D7 uh, standardized uh, strand. They have other uh, 60 over strand that uh, from the other uh, species that didn't show the GSK3 beta result. So, uh, so. Uh, so they don't show any uh, result in the uh, tested uh, strain tested in recans. Overall, okay, sample with uh, GSK3 beta individual is exert, exerted uh, anti malaria activity as well. Interestingly, a uh, non uh, SSC GSK3 beta uh, activity uh, sample have no anti malaria uh, activity, just as I show now with the 60 or, or 60 sample. Hence, uh, yeast based assay expressing SS GSK3 can be a good preliminary screening to narrow down sample selection for anti malaria. So, this is, uh, means uh, it's more cost effective and uh, using than rather than you straight away do the uh, more, uh, uh, cell culture uh, uh, assay, which is more considered more expensive and this is very limited. So, this is a uh, very good. This type of assay, yeast based assay, is very good to. Just start the screening when you have a crude extract uh, isolated from microbe or other plants. I think this is a good preliminary assay just to, to do a screening. So the sec uh, second type is the debuter phthalates uh, DBP or we just uh, DBP uh, sources is isolated from H as mentioned H11809 from the uh, Malaysia. So when I see 50 of 14.4 micromolar uh, is a uh, anti malaria uh, mode of action is really unknown so far. So it's have been reported a biological activity is antifungal, antimicrobial and anti malarious. So the other strange is uh is uh nocadamins. It's also isolated from the H11808 and other also other strange. Uh, Plasmodium 3D7 IC50 show a 1.5 micromolar anti malaria is a possible IO chelating, but it's not confirmed. Uh, reporting bio, bio, biological activities are considered anti malaria. So, a total of 18 compounds were identified it's, uh, using the exposure. Uh, expo as mentioned, uh, it's using a different uh, multiple exposure exposure 1, exposure 2, I uh, follow exposure 3, and we increase uh, uh, the drug resistance was developed. Uh, DB resistance developed fails, therefore, hence, uh, more aeration remain unknown, so it is still considered uh, worth to uh, further in other way of to identify of more aeration on different temperature 28 degrees and 37. So, DBP is uh, uh, using a 160 micro emission in a 28 and 37 degrees. So, TDZD also uh, show inhibitors. So TB between twenties. So plasmodium GSK3 knockout uh, GSK3 as is a uh, must be anti malaria mode of actions. So second part is a uh, nocadamines. Nocadamines is a uh, known uh, ion chelators. So the additional of uh, more than twelve point five micromolar ion reduce more than ninety percent of. Uh, so overall, the findings DPP possible inhibit of uh, plasmodium GSK3, no calderin confirm is a uh, now it's confirmed as a ion chelating, starving plasmodium from its ion sources. So for the conclusion, sample will have a humanized uh, GSK3, uh, GSK3 3 beta individual activity also exert anti malaria activity. Hence, yeast based assay can be interesting preliminary approach to do a discovery. So this is very useful. When you are set up a low cost, when what for do for drug discovery. Second, a total of 18 compounds were identified, suggested, or from Malaysia or uh, Japanese sources, microorganism, include compound never reported as anti malaria or possible uh, new drugs uh, compounds. Micro microbes should be further explored for anti malaria drug discovery. 
So this is a reference may be used for the my presentation and the whole studies. So I want I want to acknowledge uh, this research is mainly uh, support by uh, FRGS uh, fundamental research grant from uh, Malaysia's government, the international internal program associate IPA from weekends. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Dr. Lane Ejikshin, for such an informative talk. Now, I'm delighted to invite our next key keynote speaker, Professor Dr. Sifki Adam, Department of Biochemistry, Chankri, Karatikan University, Turkey. And he will talk about the investigative phenolic compounds on hexokinase 2 enzyme activity. Please, Professor Dr. Sifki Adam. Hello, uh, my, my name is Şevki Adam. I work at Çankırı Karatekin University, Department of Chemistry. I work as an inhibition and activation study, uh, protein provocation and characterization uh, study. We can do molecular modeling study, molecular ducking, uh, also uh, glutathione reductase, alpha amylase, pyruvate kinase, M2, Pancreatic cholesterol esterase, carbonic anhydrase, to enzyme activity study. Firstly, what is the cancer? Cancer is primarily as metabolic disease. They are undergoing a new metabolic regulation, unlike the normal cells. More than a hundred types of cancer have been discovered, and each cell types has its own metabolic process. This difference is complicated the fight against cancer. The hallmarks of cancer, uh, you can find instability and mutations, evasion of cell death, also evasion of growth inhibitor signals. Growth signal works out autonomy and reprogramming energy metabolism, uh, avoiding immune distractions division and metastasis. This imaging shows uh, differ cancer cells and normal cells. Normal cells shape uh, have cancer cells uh, exhibit irregular shapes. Growth cancer cells out of control. Uh, normal cells normally control growth factor growth. Communication uh, normal cells communicate uh, other cells, but uh, cancer cells not com not communicate other cells because but nutrients uh, normal cells prefers fat ketone glucose. On the other hand, these metabolic differences also offers options to develop a specific treatment method. Uh, they have less toxic and provide faster treatment for each cancer treatment. Warburg effect. The Otto Warburg identified the cancer cells consume 10 times glucose than other cells, and methods based on this data were developed for cancer diagnosis. Warburg effects on tumor cells. Uh, normal cells break down glucose to private and uh, the high amount private enter the uh, 3-carboxylic acid cycle and uh, electron transport change produce high amount ATP. But tumor cells uh, break down glucose private, but private uh, go another pathway and uh, convert high amount uh, private to lactate and uh, energy efficiency very low. This glycolysis pathway was not preferred as a target in treatment because of its to toxic effects uh, because it is present in every cells. With chemo resistance uh, fructose bisphosphate, uh, 
contribute anti apoptosis Enzyme hexokinase genes affects transcription, transcription factors. It was discovered that uh, different isomers of some checkpoint glycolytic enzymes in cancer cells or are expressed. They have been identified as a new specific targets in cancer therapy. Also, uh, some research carried out uh, clinical study. Hexokinase 2. Hexokinase 2, uh, the first catalyze the conversion of glucose to glucose 6 phosphate. This irreversible enzymatic reaction is of the fundamental importance, and not only because it traps glucose inside cells, also, uh, but also because it's product glucose 6 phosphate. Glucose 6 phosphate uh, use uh, glycolysis. Also, uh, it use pentose phosphate pathway, hexoamine pathway, and glycogen synthesis. This enzyme is predominant in malignant and rapidly proliferating tumors rather than most normal adult tissue. Of significance, deleting hexokinase 2 inhibit progressing with no signal of adverse physiological effects. These properties vary the consideration of hexokinase isoenzymes 2 as an attractive target for anti tumor therapy. This table shows some uh, tumor types, uh, hexokinase high expression, breast diffusion, uh, large B-cell lymphoma, uh, gilblostoma, and uh, prostate cancers. The aim of study is to determine the effects of some natural flow and compounds on hexokinase 2 enzyme activity. Also, to predict interaction details by molecular modeling method. The Terrian method, hexokinase 2 enzymes obtain uh, hella cell culture compounds measured as a poor uh, hex enzymes, and the enzymatic reactions carried out after uh, glucose 6 phosphate convert. To uh, 6 phosphogluconate by glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase enzymes. These enzymes also use NADP plus coenzymes and produce NADPH. The NADPH absorbs light uh, 314 uh, nanometers. Uh, we found we tested four compounds again hexokinase uh, inhibitors by kaline. Uh, it have uh, two micromolar IC50 values. Uh, Bicaline inhibits enzymes with uh, uh, glucosides. Glucosides uh, decrease it. its inhibitor effects. Again, hexokinase. Irradiation or radio radiation, we can use this nanoparticle as a PS in um, photodynamic therapy. Another strategy is combination therapy with APDT. That in uh, one of our research, we use a flavonate compound, compound routine, and uh, in combination with photodynamic inactivation, I'm using methylene blue as photosynthesizer against the gram positive and gram negative bacteria, as you can see here, by using combination therapy. Uh, the plankton and biofilm form of uh, bacteria decrease in compared to a methylene blue alone. Also, in the form of a biofilm, uh, we saw that also decrease in the uh, CFU in compared to control and methylene blue alone. Another thing was that uh, um, this uh, combination. Uh, doesn't um, like uh, uh, show phototoxicity against human dermal fibroblasts in the low concentration that we use. We display that alone. Uh, what was what, what was the mechanism and how methylene blue acts as a photosynthesizer in a combination with uh, routine? We saw that um, methylene blue alone as a photosynthesizer, um, just uh, there is in two form monomer or dimer, and in the solution. Uh, Methylene blue tend to form dimer, which is led to decreasing its phototoxicity. Tablets and monomer form, so increasing the APDT efficacy. 
Uh, we have also shown that APVT can be used for uh, virus inactivation. In this regard, we have a uh, 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 probab uh, bi biophysical chemical management in SARS-CoV-2. Like uh, in this regard, also there are other research that have been done and using and uh, suggesting APVT for uh, COVID uh, virus inactivation. I like to uh, just show like antimicrobial photodynamic healing or cell like wound healing. And uh, APTC can use for dental infection, including periodontitis or endodontic, and also can be used for uh, leishmania. Here, there is a before and after photo of using uh, PDT in clinic for um, against different uh, skin problem. And as, as I said, APDT can be used for dental infection, dental caries, endodontic, peri implant, fungal infection, periodontic problem that is in oral infection. Uh, also, APDT can be used as a bacterial infection and it can have a good effect on wound healing by destroying the um, bacterial in the wound area and increasing the wound uh, healing. Uh, APDT can be used in infected diabetic food ulcer, as we know that uh, diabetic food ulcer is like uh, one of the increasing problem um, um, these days. So PDT as an antibacterial effect uh, can reduce the total of, and pathogenic microbial load in diabetic ulcer. And in, in, um, and in this regard, it could be, uh, be useful for increasing wound healing. Uh, here I show that uh, the using of photodynamic therapy or uh, photodynamic inactivation that can be used with different nanoparticles against different uh, uh, pathogenic and can be used in different phases of wound healing and can increase the uh, wound healing process. As conclusion, I can say that uh, uh, photodynamic therapy and also uh, photodynamic uh, like inactivation um, it can have a uh, good effect in uh, like um, in um, decreasing the resistance in different kind of bacteria in different kind of microorganisms as it can be uh, combined with uh, nanoparticles and uh, apply uh, against different pathogenic bacteria or fungi or um, different microorganisms uh, for um, like uh, increasing the for, de for decreasing the um, drug resistance. Thank you all for your attention. If you have any question, I would be happy um, to answer. Thank you, Dr. Fetri Khorshandi, for such an informative talk. I'm delightful to invite our next keynote speaker, Dr. Elkana Ruzak, Faculty of Agriculture Sciences and Technologies, Nede Umar Halstamer University, Turkey, and she will talk about antimicrobial effect of jitsen coating supplemented with cinnamon essential oil on the rainbow trout fillers. Please, Dr. Ilkanur. Hi, everybody. My name is Ilkan Uchak. I am from Turkey, and I'm working as an associate professor in Udama Halistan University in the Faculty of Agricultural Sciences and Technologies. First of all, I would like to thank the organizing committee for giving this nice opportunity to me. And I hope you will enjoy with my presentation. And my topic is antimicrobial effects of shytosan coating supplemented with cinnamon essential oil on the rainbow throat fillers. Firstly, I would like to give some basic information about the fish and the spoilage of fish products. As we all know, the fish has a very important place in the human nutrition and human life. Uh, but with also fish contain high, uh, high uh, amount of polyunsaturated omega-3 fatty acids. That's why it's very important in our life, in our in nutrition. But with its beneficial uh, sides, there are some uh, disadvantages of this product. Since uh, fish meat spoils very quickly, due to the, its higher water content and its neutral pH, and the most important deterioration is the microbial spoilage in the fish meat. As I mentioned, uh, 
The high water content and neutral pH make it to make the fish product very susceptible to the microbiological spoilage. It is possible to inhibit microbial growth in the fish product uh, with the store, storing of the product temperature below minus 10, minus 12. Uh, however, chilling or freezing alone doesn't prevent microbial spoilage. That's why combining different processing and packaging technologies uh, has today. Fresh or frozen in plastic packets. However, with the um, with the awareness of consumer and with the demand of consumer to work to the uh, natural products, um, the usage of the plastic packets restricted because they are not biodegradable and therefore they pose serious ecological problems. Uh, also, the, there are some other disadvantages of the plastic packets. What are they? Uh, they can be contaminated by foodstuffs and biological substances. This making uh, and making recycling of these materials is impractical and uneconomical. Recently, essential oils have been applied to edible films as a natural preservative to increase the shelf life of quickly deteriorating foods such as fish meat. However, the essential oils hydrophobic and volatile properties and their susceptibility to oxygen and light reduce their stability during processing and storage. And also, the effective application doses are limited since essential oils can cause organoleptic spoilage in the food. Therefore, the use of essential oils with edible films or coatings is an alternative way. Um, creating emulsions with essential oils and adding them to the edible films increases their stability and effectiveness. Uh, what is edible film? It's a thin layer of material coated or wrapped around a food product to act as a barrier to the surrounding environment. And also edible films are promoting systems for the improvement of food quality, shelf life, safety, and functionality. To summarize, the aim of study, we can say that it was objected to evaluate the antimicrobial effects of shaitosan coating enriched with cinnamon essential oil emulsion on the rainbow trout fillets during the refrigerated storage for 15 days. The storage temperature is 4 degrees, minus plus 1. Uh, in the study, we used rainbow trout fillets and the, uh, the fish supplied uh, freshly from a fish farm in the Nether Nether region, as you see here. Uh, uh, rainbow trout and cinnamon essential oil was supplied commercially from a market. Here you, you can see the flow chart of the preparation of shaitosan films. And after preparing the shaitosan solution, we uh, added the essential um, the cinnamon essential oil in the shaitosan uh, solution. And after air drying, uh, we provided a thin layer film and we uh, wrapped the fish fillets from both sides and we evaluated uh, total mesophilic bacteria, total cyclophilic bacteria, and total enterobacteria and lactic acid bacteria and as you see the Incubate, in, incubating temperature and uh, the duration of 
the intubation, you can see here the agars also. We use plate count agar for um, total mesophilic bacteria and total psychophilic bacteria. And violet red bile agar used for the enterobacteria. And um, MRS agar was used for the lactic acid bacteria and intubation was conducted in the anaerobic gels. Uh, let's skip to the results. Here you see the total cyclophilic bacteria figure. And during the storage, as you see, in the all groups, total cyclophilic bacteria showed an increase. However, uh, in the control, and for, sorry, first of all, let me explain the group's name. C is the control, CF is the uh, groups which plotted with only shikosantium, CAO is the, the groups wrapped with the shikosan solution supplemented with essential oil. The lower cyclophilic bacteria count was observed in during the storage period in the group CAO. Uh, at the beginning, this value was 2.78 and at the end of storage in the group control it increased uh, to 7.32 in the CF it is 7.04 and in this group CAO it is 5.97 as you see uh, the higher value was observed in control and the lowest value was observed in this group CAO. And it can be obviously seen uh, the cinnamon essential oil has a uh, suppressing effect on the growth of psychophilic bacteria. Let's talk about the um, total mesophilic bacteria. The initial value was 2.16. And uh, as you see, uh, this volume increased during the storage in all groups. However, uh, control showed the highest value, while uh, the group CAO showed the lowest value as 5.06. For the lactic acid bacteria, we can say during the storage, the lactic acid bacteria count showed increase. Uh, the initial value was 1.47, and at the end of storage in all groups, it increased and it reached at 5.13, uh, 4.37, and 4.17 in the group C, CF, and CAO, respectively. Uh, let's skip to the total enterobacteria. As you see, uh, there is an increase during the storage in all groups, but we observed the lowest value in the group, which covered with the chitosan film supplemented with cinnamon essential oil. The at the beginning of storage, this value was 1.78, and at the end of storage, it reached to conclude our results. We can say uh, Shikosan uh, films has suppressing effect in the growth of uh, microbiological in the growth of microorganisms, and uh, microbiological spoilage can. Uh, can be prevented uh, with these films. But uh, cinnamon essential oil uh, addition had suppressing effect than the film, more suppressing effect than the shitosan films. So the combination of cinnamon essential oil with the shitosan film uh, is very effective to inhibit microbial growth 
in the rainbow trout fillets during storage for 15 days at four degrees. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, hope you enjoyed with my presentation and I hope it was a beneficial topic for you. Thanks again. Thank you, Dr. Ilkanor, for such a remarkable talk. Now, the plenary session has ended, and I'm thankful to all the keynote speakers deliberating in various areas of biological sciences. All the constructive intuitions give us a new perspective of advancement in biological sciences. Now, we will have our first oral presentation session at 10 o'clock, which will include talk from the fields of parasitology, microbiology, and toxicology. Thank you for your participation. Stay tuned with us.